hello, yes. Yes, bloody hell, yes. Is it hello. my phone? Can you imagine if it wasn't? It I would scream. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems to be, it seems to be working. Hello, everyone. Um, I am hi. Yeah, a YouTube live stream. We do not do YouTube live streams very often. There will be a bit of a delay, more of a delay than with We Twitch. do not do this. I don't know why that is or why that happened. But um, yes, we've got the, the chat up and people are just saying hello to us now. So it's quite a delay. I'm going to have to have it on here as well, just so we can uh, see the actual, the comments coming in. This um, is the comments coming yeah, in. Yeah, but they're, they're delayed, are they not? No, this is the live thing. I've got it in a pop out. I'm oh, way ahead right. of you. Oh. Okay. Oh, she's fine though. She's she's a bit jammy about all this. She's a bit foxy. Um, we this is, are this is Streamlabs and this is YouTube. Live. We are here dressed as Damiano, David, and Sheldon Riley from Eurovision 2021 and 2022, respectively. I've just caught a glimpse of us in the monitor, and we look insanely stupid. <laughs> oh, Rolly and Lux are here. Hello. However, hello, Rolly and Lux. Don't know who the hell you are. How's it? Now listen. Just two European women. You may. May or may not be ordinary men. So not this today. Uh, may or may not be it's aware that men. we went to Eurovision. We were on the ground in Liverpool, mm. and we were lucky enough to see the semi-final one and two rehearsal show. So we managed to I see am everyone. Be showing off nipples in this, but everybody just has to be cool <laughs> about it. Everyone, don't look at Nova's nipples. She's very conscious about them because the size of them are so big. Um, so basically we did a Eurovision vlog, which is going to be coming out. It's an hour long and it's going to be coming out on Sunday. If you are yeah. a patron or if you would like to jump on our Patreon, patreon.com slash Novimpia, there is already a two hour extended cut of the vlog on the Patron. But we usually do a, on the game, oh, not again. We had Who five, the hell is Edgar? Five days with Rolly and Lux and that was just <laughs> maybe one day too long. Don't you think? <laughs> Uh, we usually do a Eurovision aftermath video. Yes, Nico, I was going to do Monica Lou, but I feel like I could not do her justice uh, in the amount of time that we had. So I thought perhaps next year. I will therefore just put a mask over my face and you can barely see just how much of a hack job this makeup is. Are you not going to take the mask off? Well, I can see perfectly well, so I'll see how long I can stand it. Oh, On okay. the actual night, I decided to take it off after about half an hour. Um, but, but what we're going to do is go through the final um, positioning of all 26 countries. Yes, this has been really, really hotly requested. I don't think we planned to do this initially, but then we thought it might be fun to do as a little live, a YouTube live. A YouTube live, because we want to just get it all out in this week whilst it's still fresh to death. Like Sarah, um, two hours of vlogging, it must have been in a K-hole. Yes. The the vlog was initially four hours and 30 minutes, something like that. That was the footage that I had. I had to whittle it down to two and then down to one again. And I am so sick of everyone that I went with. I include you in that. I've not watched that. From just seeing yet. them. Look at the swing on this. Isn't it great? Um, I like my, my earrings. Gorgeous work. So let's just get into it. Enough silliness. Daniel Day-Lewis is here. No. Daniel Day-Lewis. Let's, we're going to start with the country who received the least amount of points from the juries. Well, from everyone, really, uh, which is Germany. Um, hang on. We have a super chat and I'm wondering if the lady is going to read it out to us. I'm not sure if she will because I, I've i tried to... I, we don't normally stream on YouTube, so this is like adapted from... Um, Twitch and I thought I thought the the text to speech. She didn't even out. do it. That's really upsetting. Dar says, "Hi guys, love your content. Would love to know your thoughts on a few of the non qualifiers." I think let's get through this and we'll do the the, the semis at the end. We'll do a Q and A portion. But I think generally speaking, we were happy with all of the. Yeah, I think we've spoken about um, semi finals and everything in in great detail in other videos on our channel already. We did a yes. top ten before the semis happened, so you know who our faves are. Our faves. I think the only one possibly was Georgia, who we may have liked to have seen gone through, but it wasn't really oh, I a great wasn't bothered about. Georgia. It wasn't really like a huge, we weren't hugely affected by it. No, all my um, face went through. Let's talk about Germany. Oh my coming. God, so it's there, it's really delayed. Hi guys, oh, love it your said content. It. Smiley face. Would love I to can know barely your hear her. Can you hear her? Yeah. Oh, okay, well we can't have that. <laughs> now Germany coming in last place, I think is a crying shame. I looked this up and in their eight, their, their, their most recent eight appearances, Germany have come either last or second to last in seven of them. Have you got both jury and televote points on here as well? Yes, it's, it's these point. two okay, on, okay. on the side. Um, yes, but Georgia, uh, not Georgia, Germany have been shit 
recently. This year, they, I don't understand what happened. This is what people have been asking from Germany. People have been saying, give us glam rock, give us a rock band. This is exactly what people have been screaming out for. Germany serves it on a platter. It looked amazing. It sounded amazing. You guys know I wasn't a huge fan of the song lyrically, but last place really it's what's going on such a crying shame i think the thing with germany is if if you consider who was going to pick up the phone and vote for germany i think they probably would have swung all their weight behind finland maybe. australia maybe even croatia a bit maybe yeah. and if you're going to pick someone because because finland and sweden were our top faves mm -hmm. just that that's how basic and mainstream we are um, but I threw my weight behind Laureen because yeah. I, I wanted her to win. So for that reason, you know, you always have to leave someone behind if you're really gunning for your first place. So that might be why Germany... That's the thing. This year had not one, but two such clear favourites. It kind of fucked it up everyone else. It's... Yes. Well, we'll get to that because there's a block of countries in the middle that ended up getting points that were so close to each other. Not this. Rolly kept <laughs> Rolly kept changing glitter to all sorts of things. The old lot of didn't all it? All kinds of naughty things. All kinds of things we can't say in a live yes. stream. Yes. Shame for Germany. I think they need to just rally and, and, and sort of listen to what people are suggesting again because... You know, I did hear the was... cover of Cha Cha Cha. I thought it was... Interesting, but not something that I would listen to again. <laughs> it's a real crying shame for them, as it also is with the United Kingdom. Um, I'm still not 100% well, sure what happened. Yes, we are. With the UK. Well, uh, running up to Eurovision, we kept saying over and over again, if you saw our pre uh, uh, prediction videos on Patreon, if you saw our sort of top 10 video on the channel, we were like, she has the potential to be top 10, top 15, which we yeah. stand by. It's a sick song. But when we actually were on the ground and we saw this live, first of all, the sound mixing was not it. No. You could not hear her. Now, did she deliver the strongest vocal of the night? No. no doesn't matter. It was so a solid performance, but it all fell a bit flat when the sound mixing wasn't there. Mm. She came last in the running order, which at first people were like, oh my God, what a, a poetic moment for the UK to close on the year when we're hosting on behalf of someone else. On paper, yes. In theory, it doesn't bode well to go last because people have already made up their minds. It's and I had a piss, piss, piss. The sort of a mid-tempo song, I don't know, it just, when we saw it all there and it was the final product, it just kind of fell apart a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, she, uh, <laughs> people are saying she sounded horrendous. That is just factually not true. She did not sound horrendous. It was quite a weak vocal. And when I say weak, I don't mean in that right. it was pitchy. I mean, like, she didn't have a lot of strength in her vocal. She sounded tired. It was very, like, well, not raspy, but just, it was faint. Kind of that breathy. combined with poor mixing is just a recipe for disaster. And I'm not trying to excuse either, because if she was singing better, then the mixing wouldn't have mattered so bad, so much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But just those two things together, it I was think, was It was a shame. Bad. There were so many things up against her. I think the really. staging looked great, but in hindsight, I really think they should have used something that had more relevance to the song lyrically. It had no, nothing, no relevance whatsoever <laughs> to the song. Instead, I couldn't hear... <laughs> It was just, it It looked great. I loved the pop art uh, visuals. I think it was really slick and really professional. But then it made the song feel even more generic because we weren't looking at revenge. Yeah. We weren't looking at writing a song. Uh, All of that was stripped out. Uh, and yeah, like you said, too the placement. Bad. It's too bad. There was so much going against her. I do have to say though, you cannot tell me that that deserved second from last. That is outrageous when Poland got more points than us. Absolutely outrageous. <laughs> I think that is the direct comparison I would make. Because I was saying to you, it feels really sad to have the UK so low, but who would you put in their place? So low, so low. <laughs> and I would have had Poland in their place. Yeah, we would. We would. So, yeah. Um, listen, we were backing her. I think we should throw all our support behind her still. Ryan's just said, remember the second rehearsal with deep backing back vocals? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. There, there, was something there was something sus going on yeah. with... That behind the scenes yeah. tech wise because that rehearsal never saw the light of day there was something going on and that was not May's fault instead it all went wrong okay so Serbia were third from bottom Serbia that were very early in the running order they were they were fifth 
And you might argue that that's kind of a forgettable early entry moment. But visually, this is very, very kind of sit up and there's a call to action for it. But I actually, in the end, don't think that this is, you know, disastrously low. Because in terms of the song, I never thought the song was... You can't sing along to Sam and Mrs. Sparva, really. This is the thing with this song. Like, on paper, I think it's a great Eurovision song, but the me- there's not really much of, like, a melody to it. There it's isn't. a little bit too experimental. There it's isn't. kind of, like, talking throughout. And Hello? I... I love this. A lot of the fans loved this, but it's not as accessible as, say, something like... What's what's even comparable to it? Well, I don't... There isn't really anything. Like you said, you can't sing along to it. Yeah, I don't know. I just think ultimately, in the end, people were clearly looking for something a little bit more accessible. Which I think is sad, because I think he did a great job. Which I is think why it looked great. I couldn't fault it. Serbia was down the bottom. I think Albania was a lot, a lot lower than it should have been. And Spain, if we're talking about accessibility, that's why Spain, in the end, floundered. I don't think um, Luke's vocals were rough. I think it's not really a song... Where you can shove a vocal. There isn't a vocal moment yeah, in that song. So I don't think that's that's fair to say. Um, maybe quiet, a bit like May. Maybe he was a bit quiet like May. I would give you that. But like rough. I don't think it sounded bad. No, not really. And no. he's great. He's got a really great new single coming out that we heard him do at the um, the London party. So I think, I, I don't know if, if he was particularly kind of like upset about that. There was a moment during the semis where all of a sudden we were a bit nervous that he wouldn't even qualify yeah uh, so i think because it's great the crowd there. were just so silent for there you it. go crown in the sky accessible equals belgium every single yeah. year we have this this moment where we get so swept up in the eurovision bubble every single year we try to remember this and we always fall foul of it when we have these opinions about songs and forget that the eurovision bubble is a tiny yeah. tiny percentage of people who are actually going to pick up the phone um, Serbia oh, was in the same league as Croatia in terms of madness. Hard disagree, but thank you very I much. I don't for agree, chat, Adam. Adam. Thank you for the tip. I just want to grab a cushion because we're sitting on like hard wooden chairs. And Nova's got a bony, bony ass. Well, while Nova dips out, let's talk I'll about. Just here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to go to the living room. Portugal, fourth from bottom, they came twenty uh, third, and I think that that comes down to the fact that there was basically no staging. They threw that together on. A wing and a prayer, and she was excellent. Oh, she did not hit a bum oh, note. Adam's comments. Serbia was so in the same league late. as Croatia in terms of. Thank you, Dorina. That's very sweet. Um, Portugal, yeah, I think that she was excellent. We, we've Showing seen her do face. that now live a bunch of times, and she did not hit a, a snag note once. I've said consistently that Portugal this year I could appreciate was amazing, really, really impressive vocal. I think everything was flawless. This will never be for me. I do, I, I, it grew I don't, on me. It will never be for me. I can appreciate the talent, the vocal. She was consistent. She never, ever gave us a bad performance. I don't like it. I think that Germany and Portugal were the biggest growers for me. But the, the problem is, again, we, we say this all the time. Songs can't afford to be growers. They need to be instantly yeah. a hook. Otherwise, people aren't going to pick up the phone. Because it's you hear it one time. The majority of people... Are going to hear it one time, which is why I still one think, time. I still think not to go on a tangent though, but I, I I think I wrote a song still could have done well if it had a slightly different package. I just think ultimately what we served up yeah. was not correct. And I do I know this Terrible. is probably a matter of taste, but I do think May's outfit was a little bit suspicious that performance mm. there was nothing to it really um, oh, all of the notifications on, on this are all fucked up that was a twitch follower that just followed oh it doesn't matter Never it's mind. all good um albania when we were talking about our predictions for who's going to qualify we said albania was a no because the song it. although i like albania's song we like albania's song i always appreciate what albania do they're always very authentically themselves we thought maybe the song wasn't going to hook enough people in, but we saw it live hmm. and gasped. We said, you know what? They did everything they needed to do to make that song present. Hmm. And they shut me up saying it wasn't going to qualify. <coughs> oh Sorry. my God. <laughs> I'm, just here. I'm really, really pleased it qualified. Um, I think it placed about where I expected it to. A- again, like Portugal, I can appreciate it. It's not for me. But I, I don't think we had a lot of kind of ethnic sounding 
music this well, year. Well, barely any. So I'm, I'm, that's why I was happy that Albania was there to give us that. And they, the staging was amazing. I loved the drama. So, so dramatic. There's only so far a song that that can go. Um, so I wasn't really surprised by that, but I was really happy it qualified. I was, if you've watched our vlog on Patreon, you'll know that I was ecstatic when they qualified. I'm always looking for Albania. There's something about the sound out of Albania. I'm always, they're always a bit of a dark horse and they don't get the points they deserve. Yeah. I don't think. Um, Slovenia coming 21st. It, I feel slightly vindicated about this because I am, I was never... F- in the bubble of people saying this was like going to be a top 10 moment. How, they didn't really get much televote or jury. Um, no, not really. It was kind of split down the middle. They got I 78 points overall. Really surprised by that because I actually thought the staging that they gave us was fantastic. I think it was really, really clever because it suddenly felt like a really intimate gig. And I think it translated both in person and on television. They sounded great. I don't know what happened. Should they maybe have had some English in this song? Would that have helped? Because it's a difficult song to sing along to. I tried to learn some of the lyrics so I could sing along to the chorus. And it's, it is quite difficult to sing along to. Do people care about that? Maybe not. I don't, I don't think people I don't care about that at all. I honestly think that the song is so... It's kind of mid-tempo. There isn't much... I mean, oh, it's people so like the song. I never, I never was able to get into Slovenia's song. And it was just kind of a little bit... In the kind of the, the, the pack, see, where did it fall? Who was it in between? Let's have a little look here. Um, it was... Luke oh, it was says, right I at the, the end. We're going to eat Slovenia up, not going to lie. Oh, no, but so look, it came after Israel, that's why. So if we were okay, saying so that it's kind of a placement bit... upset them then. Dull sounds like a, a, a rude word. It doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be. But it is very after like, pow, Israel, pow, pow, pow. People were going to be busy talking about Israel. They wouldn't have been paying attention. And it just is, uh, it, it brings the energy down a bit after Israel. So I think that kind of fits where it it should have done, ultimately. Um, Switzerland. Did you, did you say Lorraine's Bridge is a bit ethnic? Who did? Did you say that? When did I say that? Like earlier on, because Abel has just said that in quotes. I never said that. Oh, because I don't agree with that either. I don't know who you're quoting there, but... It, Laureen's it was, bridge is a bit ethnic. It's not It's not me. I wouldn't have said that. That no. doesn't make any fucking sense. No. Um, <laughs> let's, talk, <laughs> let's talk about Switzerland. Again, we had said before we saw this live that they were on the borderline, probably weren't going to make it. We yeah. thought people would resist the kind of anti-war message as being a little bit take advantage a little bit. Yeah. But then we saw this live and immediately changed our opinion. No. But oh, we did? I didn't. We I like it. Absolutely did. I like it for what it is, but I still think the war thing is what yes. works against it. I, I never changed my mind with that. Oh, oh no, 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 no. We changed our mind on the message, but we changed our mind on if it would qualify or not. I thought we had discussed. There's a bit in the vlog. Don't speak on my behalf. There's a bit in the vlog where um we we just dis- you you can see that we discussed it um qualifying because the staging was so strong. Yeah, I this thought. was a, this is a good song. It's a good vocal. It, it good. looks great. The staging was actually really creative. I mean, the problem is, do you? Were people going to enjoy the fact that this was like an anti-war song from a country that generally keeps their noses out and a child who has no experience of these things and they're they're recreating gunshots on the stage and like things were falling out the sky? Like, like really, is this appropriate in, in the current climate? Or yes. is it appropriate for someone so young to be singing about how he doesn't want to... I, I don't know. But um, if you think about it, it's like... A dark ride at Disney. It was really cool. Like all the special effects were amazing, <laughs> dark, and well, the lighting was amazing. That's the thing, though, isn't it? It's again inside the bubble. We're all analysing the shit out of all this stuff, and we were like, okay, but this seems maybe a bit tasteless. This doesn't seem like it's going in a good direction. People are just watching this, and they're just like, oh, what a beauty! He sings it so beautifully. It's very arresting on the stage. That's kind of I why it qualified. His outfit. Yeah, it was good. He that had excellent styling. skin. Very, very I flawless would wear skin. That, that like sheer mesh shirt oh, oh so but good. I think they fell where they were going to always I can't say that it's, it should have been any higher or lower than that Poland on the other hand so Poland finished in 19th place which you might argue is still even a bit high <laughs> yes but if you look at that it's all televotes it's all tele. so they got 81 televote points and they got what's the maths on that 12 jury points and I'll tell you what it's because on the surface your average viewer that probably is more entertaining than what the UK sent. 
Well, I will say, first and foremost, going from the Polish national selection, she and the, I guess, the Polish delegation did every single thing they had to do to serve up that, I don't want to say swill, (laughs) but they, her vocal was strong enough. She threw in some dancing, which I think she looked good though. Like dance, the dance break. It, yeah, the it dancing did, it was competent. Good. The whole idea of the dance break was ludicrous. Yeah, it was. Let's it was be real. Slow mo, Mark. Let's two. be real. I, I'm not saying Chanel invented the dance break because she didn't, and that's a stupid thing to say. This dance break that Blanca did was specifically reminiscent of the one that Chanel did last year. Mm. The placement in the song, the same percussion, there's even a move where she, like, does her hips to, like, the drum beat. It's very, very reminiscent. And because a lot of people are saying, oh, Chanel didn't invent it. That's not what I'm saying. These two specifically are very comparable. There was always a bit of a question mark about what they were trying to do with that. Even the name of the song was reminiscent. It's, that too. It's it's when you kind of break down the um the artistic integrity of the song, it kind of falls apart. But As again, someone who respects artistic integrity. integrity. I am disgusted that you have come here tonight dressed as my husband. As Sheldon Riley. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yes, okay. Poland. You know, it probably should have been a little... Are you ready for a little baby? Baby. Is it in a song They're about... It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Thank you for the tip, Nut. Great. Oh, and when she showed up with the baby written on her... That was skirt. so cringe. That was so job. cringe. That is one way to like, immediately kill a joke. But also, when people were asking her about on the turquoise carpet, she did such a shit job at explaining it. She because didn't I think get it, she did kind she? Of, what was that? Either she didn't get it, or she kind of assumed that more people knew about it than they did... Okay. Which is also embarrassing. So Moldova finished in 18th place. They were just shy of 100 points. And I actually think that's interesting for something which is very kind of sonically reminiscent of Fulen last year. Uh, the package, the whole yeah. package, very similar. I think f- whereas Fulen came, was it last in the end or second to last? Maybe Maybe even last. been last. Because did it not come right at the end of the running? Or I think Fulen was, might have even been the last song. I'm not sure. So but maybe I that's think, what shot it in the foot. I think Fulen was better than this. Well, I Miles would agree. Better. I think Fulen was. It was more authentic. People picked up the phone for Pasha. And I think that kind of ended up where it should have done. Yeah, I'm not surprised about that. Again, like that's a positioning that Like I was, him. We yeah. like that song. We don't dislike it at all. I'm not saying it's like, you know, a, a cheap rip off. I'm, think, I'm saying it's Coming interesting. Coming off they, of his last entry into Eurovision I do get kind of vibes from it where he's maybe a little bit like oh I did ayahuasca last year and now this is the new me I I, I struggle with the authenticity of all of this spiritualism because his previous song was fucking worlds apart from possibly this. possibly I just think when That's nobody voted for personally. Fulen people just weren't in that same vibe mm. clearly um, yes Luxaria liked Moldova and she liked Norway he is hot everyone's saying he is hot he is hot I'm. He, I can't see that because he reminds me of Jazza slash Polly, <laughs> who is just so unattractive. Anyway, um, let's talk about Spain. Spain yeah. was a bit of a jury darling. It wasn't quite as high as I think we all thought maybe it would be. I don't think anyone disagreed when we all thought Loreen was going to win the jury vote. We thought that perhaps Finland would be up there. We were talking about France, Spain, and. Israel was in the conversation. Oh, Italy as well was obviously going to be up there. So we knew it was going to do well. It got 95 in the jury scoring, which is a lot lower than I certainly thought it was going to do. That's overall. It only got oh. five televote points. But when it oh, came so through... The no, no, no. It's, it's, um, it's in fact not what oh. I thought it was. Right. But it's just the overall score. But when, when it came through that she got five televote points, my first reaction was obviously, oh, that is a travesty. One of the bigger, I think Spain getting no televote points, Germany coming last, perhaps the points that Australia and Czechia got, but certainly Spain getting five was one of the bigger travesties of the year. Would you not mm. agree with that? It, yeah, like yeah, I have to be objective about this because I got a bit sick of the song when it came around to the live shows, but that is not the case for people watching it for the first time, of course. 
when we first watched this, I was absolutely blown away. I thought it was magnificent. And so I was quite confident that people would pick up for the, the phone for this. But... Because most people are watching this for the first time. There's a big but with that, though, because the, the very first time we heard this without really seeing the entire performance, we were like, oh, that's not something we can hook into. Do you remember when we first heard it? We were like, what's this sound? Yeah, it's very it's, unusual to us. It, to me, it's just a, a, a bit much. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. So I think that in retrospect, the idea that the, the general viewing public like didn't vote for Spain is not that surprising because it is a very challenging song unless you're sort of really willing to put the work in and appreciate what she's trying to do. It's incredibly Spanish and it's, it, you know, she was doing something which the juries, I think, probably should have given more to, but it doesn't, now we're looking back at it. It doesn't really surprise me. And that's one of the key things, again, being in the bubble, we were saying Spain was going to be right up there. Do you know what's happened over all this year is that risks have not paid off. Which is a shame, isn't it? In general, across the board, yeah. risks have not paid no. off. So I'm imagining a lot of dance, bangers, Europop next year. Shit, I don't a know. A lot of people what trying to play is safe. Luxembourg going to bring? Imagine Luxembourg come back and it's just cash. Yeah, Spain's annoying screaming. It, it's not screaming, but if you're not really tuned into it, it can sound a bit like screaming which I guess only listening Piero Arda would have done significantly better I think because it's I a think lot it more accessible done. I think Agony would have done better and yeah, that's you know really whereas Spain really go in for what they love and did so last year everyone wanted Tanks Ugueras which I probably nailed that pronunciation and then everyone voted for slow-mo. Spain voted for slow-mo, didn't they? But this year it didn't work. Do you know what? That's so them. interesting. Imagine Quiero Arde this year. It would have done so well because that clearly was what well. people were after. People were after a bit of fun, weren't yeah. they? It's a shame. It's a shame for her because we, we saw this live a couple of times and she's exquisite. So, you know, hopefully she's not too bummed by yeah. that. She actually gave one of the better reactions to a crap score when it was on live yeah. than some of the others, which we can't say for the country that came in 16th, which is France. Sh yeah, what was that business I about? Loved that. <laughs> now, how do you think in the end, France for us was a big discussion because when we saw this live at the semi-rehearsal, we thought she sounded very strong vocally. I said... There and then, there were a few bum notes, but nothing that distracted from the overall performance. And I said, watching and it I back, said then, we are yet to see her sing this song perfectly. Perfectly, yeah. Um, and I think the grand final performance was even worse. Um. Oh, thank you, Mo Connor, for the tip. This is a big discussion for us. Was there a bit of a backlash against Spain's toxic fans last year? Oh, that's interesting. I had considered to discussing that earlier on. Do you Again, think people I think have fandoms that in mind? are too small. I don't think it affects the overall to... thing that much. That's that maybe like within the fandom, people will vote that way. But yeah. I think if we've learned anything out of this, is that the Eurovision fandom don't care. Is a spec. They don't care, and they don't know people. Yeah. Are, the, the the live general one night viewer, they don't know any of the drama. They don't know yeah. any of this. So it I hadn't probably even doesn't that, but yeah. uh, make an effect. But that did dawn on me, funnily enough. Because because they were very, very vocal, weren't they? And in large numbers. Yes, yeah, we got Finland. Um, the thing about... Oh, thank you, Ray. I'm sorry, I know we've moved on. Can't get over Poland song being so similar to Solo by Demi Lovato. Is that right? Thank you, Raya. I don't think it's that similar, but I do think, and I've mentioned in podcasts before, that if you want a sort of summary, borderline, reggaeton-inspired <laughs> bop called Solo, Sorry, then listen we've to the one by Demi Lovato because it's so much better. That's interesting. So similar to Solo um, by Demi Lovato. Okay, so the, the, the thing that I was bringing up with France is... Vocal. And we said this about most of the songs, was in the arena, people sounded so much better... Yeah. The I don't know if it was the theme to like yeah, just give them a push. give a nice little veneer of sparkle over everything. Yeah, a nice veneer of sparkle yeah. over. And then we got home. Well, I thought this when we watched the recap on the screen, and then we heard Lazara being recorded, and I thought, well, that sounds a bit off to me in a mm. few places. Not that I'm a fucking expert, of course not. But the point is that we thought France was going to do a hell of a lot better. Yeah. And in the end, it was kind of a bit underwhelming. They had a bit of a UK May Muller situation when it was so hyped and so built up. And then watching it, it kind of lost a bit of its veneer of sparkle. I will say she looks insane and the staging was fantastic. It it was so impressive in person and on television. I think the staging was probably what got that performance all its points. Well, it was very grand, but I wonder if it 
pull if it looked as good at home. There were yeah, a few no, countries. It did. Some of the camera angles were so impressive. There were quite a few countries where in the arena, the the staging. I thought this about Australia. The staging seemed to be so much grander and more impressive. And you watch it on TV, and with maybe one too many close ups, you lose what's going on around. Um, I don't know. So that was a bit of a, a kind of... Hannah wah, agrees wah. about the acoustics in the arena. Night and day seen at live versus the TV. Yes, wasn't yeah. it like that? Very, yeah. very interesting. Chris says, say veneer of sparkle again. It's like a veneer of sparkle. A bit like this, isn't it? <laughs> um, let's move on. Okay, so this is probably the one of the larger upsets, if not the biggest kind of upset, apart from maybe Garia not winning, which Can we is... we see detailed voting results? Austria. Oh, I'm moving this. I remember, I remember Austria. What did they get? So they got 104 jury points and 16, I think, televote points. Why did people not vote for them? But again, you have to wonder if all the points are going to Sweden and Finland, generally speaking, you're not... Maybe the people that wanted the fun and that kind of energy, they all voted for Finland and then kind of forgot about Austria. Maybe. Especially since Austria were first. They pl they played first. The only thing I could think about with Austria is um, their vocal in the semi-final was miles better than in the grand final. That was not their best vocal in the grand final, sadly. Um, let's just keep it real. Um, I... A lot of people are taking issue with the styling, with the staging. Yes, me Kim, we made the outfits. Go on. Me personally, <laughs> I had no problem with either. I loved the styling. I think they looked great. I loved the staging. Because mm -hmm. I was wondering how they could do this. They could either go really, really kitsch or do more what we received. I thought it was very smart. And I liked that we had the important numbers and a few lyrics up on the screen. I, Dion, the running order absolutely. I think them. maybe the whole attitude with this song, this whole apathetic attitude, possibly didn't translate so well to the average. That was going to be my point exactly. Viewer. Was in the video, the it. whole vibe of it just being like, because uh, uh. that is the point. I mean, the fan yeah. knows what this song is about. They understand that that is the point, but it's not immediately obvious. Especially in an arena setting when you kind of have to be like as big as possible. And it might have just looked is. like they couldn't really be asked. It did come across like that. But let's not forget that one of the fan favourites last year was Czechia with Where Are You Now? They played first, just like Austria did. And they also got peanuts. So the running order definitely yeah. affects how things work. We can't pretend like it doesn't. Yeah. People miss the beginning of the show. People are sort of like yeah. boozing by the end. They yeah, forget. we had a big viewing party and a lot of people missed the first one. Yeah, so I mean, well that might be because our projector didn't work because the sun hadn't set yet. But anyway, that's people neither. People are watching it on <laughs> here. Oh, Adam, thank you for the tip. Pi, 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 Who the hell is Shah? Okay. <laughs> So Armenia came next. I think that that is perfectly where they should be. Uh, 122 points. Yes. But we're in this block now. If we consider the country that came 20th got 92. And then you shoot all the way up to 10th. 129 points. The gap, the distance between them. We're talking about like 30 points. Because all of these songs in terms of quality... Are kind of comparable, not the songs sonically, but in terms of quality, oh, it's very hard to predict who's going to go so where, especially when most of the points are going to go up towards the top. Just, just pause a moment. Darina is asking, Thank you for the super chat. I'm American, Maybe first time voting. Do folks just buy their 20 votes and use it all on one person? Spread it out. Oh, I spread it out. Maybe that was wrong. I spread it out. I like to think who needs it the most, who I'm a fifth or the most, and I will give them the most votes. And then I will just kind of like cover my bases. I can't speak for everyone, but I, I vote for yeah. multiple people. When you vote, you literally just dial a number and it says, thank you for calling the Eurovision Song Contest. You have voted for San Marino. Of course, nobody did that. But anyway, um, I I voted them all for Sweden. <laughs> Super Catman, was it just me or were the last 10 songs or so hard by some behind the scenes audio issues so disappointing? I don't know if that's, um, if that lines up with their placements because these countries that had audio issues in the final also had them in their semis. So I think that's just something else going but on. But some countries really did suffer. I don't know what they were doing with the UK, but some countries nailed it every single time. Yeah. And, you know, Armenia, I think, I, I never loved that song that's I, a song that's elevated by staging. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think Armini was fantastic. I loved everything about this. I was super, super impressed. I think she did even better than I could have imagined. I loved Turn the dance it. break. 
Um, it probably placed about where I expected it to, because I know this is not for everyone. This just clicked with me. I've always vibed with this. I actually think the um, dance break for Armenia made even less sense than for Poland. I just probably didn't I get did it. all twenty for Sweden too. No, but I think the dance break for Armenia It was good. Worked. But I just think I did not understand it. That to me was kind of a last ditch that to me was like a revamp and change it to English as a last ditch attempt to get some more points. I didn't really appreciate Armenia. I no, think it finished well. where it did. Um Croatia were thirteenth. So Croatia for us was always a big question mark. Are they going to get peanuts because it's so like what's going on yeah. or al alternatively are they going to be like moldova last year and people come out in force for the weird and for the kind of campery in the theater of it and they did so personally we would have had croatia lower nobody we? was voting for croatia because it was a thoughtful political song with a hidden meaning behind it's it. It's unlikely. No one, I, I say no one, 90% of people were not voting for it for that. It was because it was an assault. And I think a lot of people as well, maybe slightly more ignorant people would have seen this as a joke entry and they just think it's fun. To it's troll colorful, maybe. It's colourful and people would vote for it <laughs> for all of those reasons. It's, how much did the UK give it? I bet the UK gave it loads. Um, I think it did in the end. This is the um, kind of stuff the UK yeah, loves. I think so. Listen, um, I mean, people vote for what they, they want to vote for. And, you know, we're yeah. not, I don't think, maybe we will at the end get into the debate about like dropping the juries, for example. But this is the kind of thing that if there aren't juries, you know, it's going to go higher and higher. And all right, you know, good for them. Good for them. They seem like really nice guys. I will say, actually, let's three. I've seen a bunch of interviews with them and they oh, seem really real solid. Good eggs. For um, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think that we are sort of in alignment with their way of thinking in a lot of ways. The song just, just sonically, so sonically absolutely cannot align wasn't with that. For I us. just can't appreciate shoot myself into however it. what they were doing. Do appreciate that. It just wasn't for me. We could have left it in the semis, I think. Um, Billy, Greece giving Cyprus four jury points. And him losing top 10 was such a surprise. Big topic in group TV. If we're going to go along Cyprus. with the idea that Greece, Greece is going to play for Cyprus, he's Australian. Losing top 10 was such yes, a he is. So uh, man did 10 forward. It was Norwegian last year. I think they may have got 12. I don't know. Um, so Cyprus, for us, we were actually having a discussion in our prediction video. We were talking about which one was going to make it through and we were stuck because I was saying Cyprus and you were saying Belgium. And in the end, we said, actually, we're not looking at this correctly because both will probably go through and we'll end up losing, we said, either Estonia or Iceland, which was yeah. what happened. We lost yeah. Iceland and we got both of the guys. So Cyprus, we were always a bit kind of not sure about. But I will say Andrew Lambrew gave the sickest vocal. I, th I mean, that is a hard song to sing. It's hard to tell for me because you can hear there's a lot of playback under those big falsetto notes. Um, it's blended very well. We should have had whoever was doing whoever the sound was mixing that? for Robert, for us. Robert. <laughs> because it was blended very well, but there were times where you could hear, that's not entirely him, which is fine. I'm not holding it against him. You're allowed to do that. The UK should have used, yeah. had, should have thought a bit we more like We should have done. Um, I you know for me, though. it was a bit boring. The song was not really the most original. That was, I think, our mm. issue with it. We liked it. We sang along to it. But we were kind of like, this has essentially been done before. But it's, uh, again, we, we keep talking about accessibility. People knew what kind of song this was. He's very easy on the eyes. The staging was generic. But, like, it was still polished and good. And everything made sense. And, like, it's just... A nice slice yeah. of pop. Do you say. know what it is? It's just a gorgeous <laughs> slice of pop. Don't overthink it's it. It's not reinventing the wheel. And it I think it good. placed where it should have done. And in the end, I didn't hate the staging either. It was like Poland's last year, but toned down a little bit. So it was like the elements coming together, but it wasn't just like, ah, shattered glass, vibrating zebra. It wasn't just like everything just thrown together. Now, Lithuania, I am... Lithuania placed 11, so it was just outside the top 10. I personally understand why she's there. She vocally is incredible. We see, we've seen her a bunch of times live. But I just thought people were going to resist that song because it's so repetitive. I liked it. I think, I find it interesting that you didn't like this when you were such a big fan of um, Saudade. Because I think there's very big comparisons to be made between Maybe just two. kind of the structure with the lyrics, but I don't see them in the Is same... Is it maybe like the gospel elements you're resisting? No, I think it's just literally... Chu -ta -wa -tu -ta -chu -ta -wa -tu -ta. I think Saudade, people liked that. Saudade was a lot more kind of chill. Uh, 
I, 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 I don't know what the deal was with... Um, I did hate her dress. With Lithuania. So yeah, the styling was a bit off. She wore a different dress in rehearsals to try it out. And someone obviously told her, no, wear this one. And that was the wrong decision. Wear the one that okay. almost shows off full beaver, by the way. God, that was pretty shocking, wasn't it? Although, um, we, I, I liked this when I first heard it. I think that Lithuania, for me, was probably the biggest fall out of my sort of, like, listening area i don't know i like the staging. i just got sick of her saying chew to a tuto i really like these pretty like um almost like magical designs we had up on the led screens it was really really pretty i really enjoyed that mo connor vocal track should they be banned again i don't no. have a problem with it i no. honestly don't have a problem because with i think maybe that we could look at the rules around vocal tracks um being used but it enables more electronic songs to go through. We couldn't have had a song like Subwoofer, for instance, without having vocal tracks. Um, even Finland is where I think needs the vocal track, and I don't think that's cheating. I think there's some tracks, genres of music where again? vocoder is a element of the actual production rather than helping the vocal. Yeah, I, I do you know what? I don't have I don't really have much of a problem with with backing tracks. No. I know some people get really up in arms. I guess if you have more of a horse in the race, if you're a singer and you're a good singer and people skate by on sort of effectively it's a form of cheating, I suppose people see it as, then maybe I can see why people would be against it. But I feel like if the, if the production people are going to see better, straight through it, aren't they? People are going to know if people are using backing tracks to help their vocals people always know like austria last year people know and it's not going to help you ultimately because people will not vote for you i don't think it's going to make much of a difference ultimately i don't really have much so of i a think it's just how you use it. it i would leave it i would leave that there i'd also leave the juries there but we'll talk about the juries in a minute we'll talk about that yeah the top 10 was rounded out with the czech republic czechia thank god we're in the top 10 because yeah. i was on the edge of my seat for a few of these results obviously the uk we were crapping ourselves there's a very delightful moment in our vlog. Again, if you've just joined us, the, the one hour Eurovision vlog, because we went to Liverpool, is going to be on the Novimpia Chanel on Sunday at six. On our Patreon, there's currently a two hour extended version there. You can watch that right now if you jump over. But there's a delightful moment at the end when Nova, who, bless her, had had some drinks. Hadn't we all, Nova? We'd had some drinks. Nova shouts across the garden because we had a party in the garden. She said, I think we're going to get at least 100 points about us. <laughs> and you see my reaction. I swerved to her and I'm literally just like, bitch, don't be so ridiculous. I was very generous. I said 30 at most. Of course, now history will show Nova. Was it 100 points? Was it buggery bum? Wasn't even 10 points. It's so hard to kind of pull yourself out of the bubble and try to pick yourself. It is hard. The masses. It's really hard. And I was really nervous for che for Czechia not pulling in because we had some weird shit. I think Spain getting five was an example mm. of, all right, if this is something a bit more thoughtful, are people going to resist Czechia? They got 35 in the end. surprised Italy ended up top 10, personally. We'll get to Italy, don't you yeah. worry about that. Um, but yeah, very, very happy for Vesna. They have a new song, a new EP out. I've heard previews of all of it. It's wonderful. If you liked My Sister's Crown, it is all that vibe. They're not going to let you down. It sounds really good. <laughs> Jacob's book, grow up, Nova. Um, <laughs> um, I really, really oh, like this. I love like, the I wanted kind them of, to get more. I love the multinationalness of it. It's all about togetherness and feminism and anti-establishment. I, I... Love it. I think I'm happy with 10. So. I know, but when you consider that they only got like 90 jury points, I just feel like I, I, we should have given them a bit more of a boost. I, I've said this before. I'll say it. I will die on this hill. I'm always looking for countries to get their first win. That to me is the most exciting thing in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, sa having said but that, again, I did vote for Sweden, which is so stupid. This was a risk. It was a this risk. This was a risk. I am so stoked, though, that at the beginning of this Eurovision journey, we were talking about which male-fronted band was going to score the highest. Mm. And we always thought Australia had a chance and people were poo-pooing it. And they came ninth in the end. Not many televote points, though. The jury's really bigged up Australia, which is a bit strange. But Tick 89. This will be available to watch later. You can watch this later. Um, Australia got 151 points. They came ninth. I think that that's Deserved. great for Australia because they've yeah. had a few years where they were a little bit off. So that's... I'm happy for them. Very, very yeah. happy. Should more people maybe have picked up the phone? I can't say that because I didn't vote for them. So I'd I be think it placed in the correct place. I think it was... But it's there. Yeah. Estonia, we were absolutely stoked for Estonia because we like that song. And more importantly, she is Alec always flawless. Is an angel. 
<laughs> she's always flawless. We've seen her do that several times now, and it's always excellent. Yeah. Her Monica was excellent every single time we saw her. Blanca Paloma. There are some of these artists, they get up there, they do their shit. And they just know what they're it's doing. Always it's always excellent. Consistent. These are singers. And Alica is one um, of those. This was an early favourite of mine. I remember as soon as this song came out as a potential for the national final, I had goosebumps. I was like, this is beautiful. And I felt like in the minority, the whole Eurovision season, nobody had any money on this. Um, but I think... The staging really worked to this. I loved the ghost piano. I loved the blues and the water imagery. I really loved her outfit. She just nailed it. I liked her outfit. I thought maybe it looked a little bit off on her somehow. I don't know that that was oh, perfect. No. It's the same as with what May has worn for a lot of this Eurovision season. I like the clothes. I don't think they worked on her necessarily in terms of proportion and framing and Disagree. stuff. Disagree. She looked amazing. I think Alec's outfit was a bit off. However, the thing that irritates me the most about Estonia is that when we first saw this, Nova and I had a conversation of like, that seems like it could be really up there as like winning potential. The more we listened to other people, we were like, oh, no one likes this. Prime example of listen to your gut. Yeah, don't, don't get into the bubble. Absolutely. Because yeah, we yeah, were talking right. at the you're semi so about, right. oh, maybe she's not going to qualify now. We were like, no one likes it. People did like it. And I'm yeah. so stoked. And we should have listened to our first reaction because yeah. we never do that. Belgium. Venom would have done better. It would not have done better. Venom would not have done better. Venom may not have qualified. Oh, I think Venom might have qualified. I don't know. I could. I love that song. That was real great. But that I don't, would not have done better. I don't think it would have done better. Belgium came seventh. That's probably the most surprisingly high country. Not for me. For us before we went to Eurovision. If we'd seen this before we got there... You would no way have said that Belgium were going to be that high. So I was surprised to see it in the top 10. I was not surprised it qualified. I always said this was an easy qualifier. And I like this. And lots of people like this. And that became really apparent when we got into Liverpool. <laughs> but if you were to tell me that Belgium placed higher than Czechia, France and Spain, I would, have, I would have asked what you were smoking. That's just so weird to me. But in the arena, I think Belgium got the biggest reaction. He's such a comfortable, confident performer. They knew exactly how they wanted to present this. It was, everything was effortless. It was perfect. And it really just comes down to personal preference. Do you like this kind of music or do you not like this kind of music? I can't because stand is, house music. So it was, it was not for me. Despite being dressed like this, I don't like house music. So it was never for me. But in that audience, I will say there's something about being in an, in an arena where there's that en level of energy. I was like going along to it. I was just like, yes, good stuff. That oh, hat is enormous. Got me going crazy. But looking at this, the, the, the reaction in the arena to Norway was not as strong as Belgium. I would probably say even Israel. I'd say it was Belgium, yeah. Sweden and Finland were the, the, the biggest reaction. So at that point we were like, wow, Belgium is really going to soar here. And Austria. Ukraine were... Good. We always liked Ukraine, yeah. the song, and they placed uh, sixth in the end. This also, again, was a risk. Um, I have always liked this. I've always been vocal about how much I liked this. I loved the staging. I think this ultimately was a good performance because I was worried about yeah, the vocals good. in the lead up to this. Um, because I've always felt, I keep saying this with a lot of people, not pitchy, but just a bit lacklustre, not giving us the oomph of the studio track. But I think he got a bit... I think he got close to that in the grand final. It came close. I think yeah. it, it was a little bit more... The, the kind of overall performance package, it may have been a little more muted than they wanted it to be. But that is such a strong song. And we didn't think they had the momentum this year to win again. Um, so coming sixth was probably about where we, we yeah. might have placed Ukraine. But they did well. It was a good, It's a good song. People really didn't listen to that enough, I don't think. I really liked the stage for this, but it could have been grander, maybe. Some, there could have been something. Also, yeah. I think people... Ukraine's one of those countries... Okay, it's the only country who's qualified 100% of the time. Um, I think people really come to Ukraine for something special. And when they see that it's something which is maybe a bit surprising, they're kind of like, oh, I don't really, I'm not really vibing with this. Because you kind of want something really kind of Ukrainian sounding or I don't know, maybe the people just resisted it. Uh, Norway were fifth. I think we always thought Norway were going to be up there. And that's about... That's about where we where we should put her. There were a few yeah. moments where I think she kind of maybe was starting to tire out towards the end. I got so sick of this song. 
I never <laughs> loved this song, but there is something about the energy of this when you're there. Like it was fun. When it you're was drunk and it moment. comes on and it's just a doof, doof, yeah. doof, doof. That, Our that problem fun, with but... this was that it always sounded a bit like Run to the Hills. It sounded a bit like a few different things. It wasn't the most original. Jay Farrow, are you uploading an Aftermath video this time? This, this is, is it. it. This is it, dolls. We're doing it right now. This will be on the channel afterwards so you can go back and watch it again. But we didn't have, what with our snack video and the vlog, we want to get this out, our opinions out as soon as possible. Um, Norway had like no staging. Uh, and the, the, the light mm. bars was very, the Saturdays, like it made no sense. I feel like Norway had a real identity problem with this song. They didn't know what they wanted to do. The music Little video bit. was proof of that. The Little music bit. video was, again, very different. Um, Alessandra is incredible. She's great. She's a hot piece. Her whistle note. Sadly, I don't know. As soon as she got to Liverpool, she started to struggle with it, having nailed it so many times. And I think people don't forget a moment like that. I think that really stays with people because that can be like super impressive or they'll be like, oh, that note was terrible. I'm Stevens put, why is Olympia dressed as a flop? I think that's an interesting point though, that we all need to kind of remember that just because your song doesn't win, I'm talking to people that are really pissy that Finland didn't win doesn't stop you from enjoying the music after the competition. Also, people, like, Sheldon's still qualified. Yes, I mean, but you know what? It's just, it, it's this whole thing where it, there's a kind of like a level of arrogance with a lot of fans where it's like, if your country doesn't win, there has to have been rigging. There has to be something going on and yeah. they were robbed. It's a competition that favours, where, where we're judging a, a subjective art. So there's always going to be kind of like personal preferences playing into it where it doesn't really it's not a perfectly fair kind of competition so if your country doesn't win we're not going to go off on someone else it's just it's it's kind of a weird aspect of this whole thing um italy were fourth and the first i think the hysterical thing about italy being fourth is that in the conversation of the big five in ukraine who's gonna fall out of the pack the early conversation was that we all thought italy were going it was going to be the one that would fare the weakest and it did the best by far, which I think is hysterical. I'm surprised by that. I think he's incredible. I, when we watched San Remo, he was one of my favorites to win. And I was really happy that he won. And I really liked this song. But for me personally, in the context of the rest of the competition, this became a bit of a snooze fest. But he sang, he just sang this beautiful song and he sang it fantastically. And maybe that clearly resonated with more people than I thought. Yes. Um, first of all, Philippe just joined the Nobimpia Patreon. Thank you so much. If you head over Thank there, you, you so can much. see the two hour vlog. And Murray, oh my God, Italy in the full leather. I'm Honry. <laughs> Honry. Um, I, I thought <laughs> there's a lovely shot in the vlog of his ass. The staging for Italy was a bit... I don't know. I didn't. Un I, like, I get Listen, you, you're gay. Okay. You're gay. We, we get, get it. You're gay. Oh, you're gay. We the get whole it. like jumping on the trampoline thing I thought was oh, a bit daft. The I, thing I about know. Italy oh my is God. that it's, really it's a very, really very I'm excellent there. performance. It was never going to be a bad performance. And it's a lovely song. But it's something Italy have done over and yes. over again. It doesn't stand out in the grand scheme of, of Eurovision things. This is almost kind of what they were trying to do with Brividia, and they actually succeeded this but time. But why did they get so many telly votes as opposed to jury points? I where don't... did he play? Where was he in the lineup? He was 11th. That's a pretty good spot. Who was he like in between? In between. That's another interesting. So after Albania and before Estonia. Um. You'd think after Albania, the drama of Albania, perhaps it would have floundered a bit. But listen, maybe people were voting for a handsome man. Um, one of our favourite Eurovision commentators, Alicia Michelle, shout out to you. She always provides excellent coverage the whole season. She always says, don't discount an attractive man. It's usually yeah. a, an attractive man with a guitar is usually what she says. But there's a lot to be said for an attractive man. And Marco, as we know, is a whole dish. So maybe that's what happened. Israel placed third, what do you think? I am happy for her. I am surprised it was that high. I always thought top 10. I always thought top 10. I'm surprised she was given that many jury points. Yeah, I'm not surprised at Televote, but I'm surprised the jury went we so wild. We knew this. that, especially seeing her do the breakdown, the dance, doing doing her whole staging thing. The, her breakdown was the best. Thank of all you, the, Nick. Here for the costume. The breakdown. Sorry to just interrupt you, but I just saw that. Oh, hello, Nick. How are you, doll? Nice to see you. Um, yes, 
Israel, Noah Carell's performance was, it was the strongest dance moment of the whole yes. thing. And we knew that people were going to pick up the phone for her. I never cared for that song, but even in the arena, I was getting into it because the whole thing was so Chris kind of just like, ooh, ooh, it was great. But I'm surprised that, the, yeah, the juries kind of gave it so much because the, the song itself is a little bit, I don't know. The, the, the staging elevated it. The whole packaging was fantastic, though. I think the staging was excellent. Costume, choreography, e everything. I think as a package, it was so good. She sounded great. She, she sounded was, great. She was probably doing some of the most intense dancing in the whole competition, and she had one of the best vocals. You so. want to see my ass? Um, it's just one of those things, though, isn't it? Like, you want to consider staging as being something that elevates your chances for people to pick up the phone. And Israel did this. They executed that perfectly. I think Australia did it. And it was entertaining. People can say what they like about this song. You can't deny that overall to watch, it was entertaining. Because however you want to think and about the memorable. semantics of it, it's not fully a song contest. It's more a kind of like performance contest, right? The song is like Everything, it all it. comes into it. The vocal, Everything comes all of it comes it. into it. Um, so yeah, I think it's uh, it's just kind of you know a bit. Michael, that is strange. a very very good point, um, and that is a discussion that is happening at the moment. I think um, the political nature of voting for Israel, how you can ban one country yep. and then not, yeah, that's a very very good point. It's kind of yeah, that's a, that's a much longer conversation. Yes, We're not like is. shying away from it, no. but it's um, we're running out of time, and that's very very complicated. So we're we're at the top two, which is Sweden and Finland. And okay, this is how this is exactly what we thought. Would we happen. knew it would be these two. My mother is always so impressed. Oh, my mother, she phones me up on the day and she goes, "Right, who's gonna win? Then go on, who's gonna win?" <laughs> and I said, "It will be a split between Sweden and Finland." And the next day she goes, "How do you do it? How do you know? <laughs> how do you know?" Of course, she's got no kind of concept of how we are following because this. Your and son it's is gay, so mother. obvious. I should I should have told her go on the bookies odds and you'll be able to do the same thing, Leslie, silly Leslie. Um, Yui Maya. Slovenia was by far my favorite so much, so I bought some of their merch. They're great. I love I love Joe. Thank Carouse. you for the super chat. Also, he's so attractive. Oh my god. He's Bo so handsome. Bo Bo Bojan. Bo Bojan. So attractive. I think that's how you say it. Um, okay, all right, okay. So now the thing is, Sweden obviously won with a large push from the jury. Oh, she got two hundred and Slovenia something televote points, so which means so that she I was still the second the most voted for yes. country. Thank you for the super chat, Daniel. Finland, on the other hand, Finland gave a lot of points to Sweden as well. Can we just say, did they not give her? No, 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 no. So this is interesting because people are talking about kind of riggery on behalf of Sweden. Finland didn't give any points to Sweden. Oh, I don't Sweden believe. gave Finland Sweden points. Sweden gave points to Finland. Right, so really, go. if we're talking about any kind of rigmarole, the fact that Finland clearly were of the mindset of let's not vote for Sweden because we want to win, that really is kind of not sportsmanship-like, right? If we're going to yeah. be... If people are saying it's rigged for Sweden, which, by the way, if they want to have an ABBA 50th anniversary interval moment... They can do that in any country. Nobody, they don't care that much about rigging no. it for ABBA to be there for the interval. No one cares that much. They certainly can put any interval act. Let's say, for example, it was held in in, in Cyprus. We're all going to be, oh, Nicosia 2024. ABBA have already said they want no part of it. So, like, they, it was, it's always going to be other artists singing their stuff anyway. They could that can have, happen anywhere. They could have Elena Ferreira come out and sing Waterloo halfway through. <laughs> if that really was what they wanted. There's no rigging it to, to happen. But again, Nobody was is... robbed either. These people placed according to the rules of the competition. Oh, it was fair it and square. Nobody was robbed. I'm sick of seeing that. Thank you for um, the super chat daniel um i've seen a lot of people now trying to like slander lorraine or or lorraine fans slandering carrier with accusations of plagiarism that i've i've heard or i've heard every single stupid song that people are saying <laughs> oh my god it sounds just like i have heard them all there mm. is one i will give the time of day and it sounds a lot like cha 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 and i cannot remember what it was called Everything else, I think, is just clutching at straws. People fail to realise that pop music 
is pop music. The clue is in the name. It's popular music. It is self-referential. The same melodies come and go all the time. If you don't like it, that's just the nature of the game. Like, I'm, I, 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 these examples are not good enough for me. Yeah, um, somebody just commented and said, look it up. They gave 12 points to each other. The, the telly votes I'm talking about. Finland gave Sweden nothing in the telly vote. The 12 points to each other is the juries, which is five people. So you, that's, not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in the telly vote, Finland, obviously, as a collective population, said, let's not give anything to Sweden. Because they didn't give them anything. This is the... Um, for people who aren't aware, Electric Call Boy, We Got The Moves. You go watch that. That sounds suspiciously like cha-cha-cha. Um, otherwise... This, this whole plagiarism thing is such horseshit. It's uh, honestly my favorite. I've said this I, every single day of my life since it came out. My favorite Eurovision song is Leslie Roy Maps. Now, if I say that to a Eurovision fan, a lot of the time they'll just laugh because. Sorry to interrupt you. Oh. RH, what do you make of the fact that Sweden didn't get a single 12 points on the televote? Maths. Maths. It's just how things work out. Yeah, but that's you, what we you said. You don't have to get all 12s to win. That's what we said, was that, that yeah. she's going to win the telly vote. She'll it's come a little bit maths. lower on the... on the. Sorry, she's going to win the juries and she'll come a little bit lower on the telly vote. But, you know, that's because people came out in force for Karia. And, you know, maybe the jury should be switched out a little. But the point I'm trying to make is, like, if... if again, if you're... You know, my favorite from 2021 she came dead last she came dead last but i'm we not out here come last all the time i'm often. not out here saying oh my god there's some kind of riggery what's going on there must have been some problem oh you, i'm gonna break this down and be like a little bitch about it people didn't like it and, and the performance did not come together for people to pick up the phone so it is what it is it doesn't stop me from now going to listen to the song and enjoying the song and enjoying yeah. her as an artist after the competition um in terms of the juries we don't think we should lose the juries at all. I think that perhaps we need to increase the number of jurors. I think it feels unfair that there is a group of people that don't, that are kind of speaking on your behalf and have such influence in the competition. I can understand why people direct so much anger towards the juries, but they do serve a purpose. I do think they're needed. I, there's a few things that I think would be good ideas for the juries. Like you said, more people. More jurors. not enough. And more specific jurors who are I think, music professionals. I think it should be a requirement to be in the music industry. I think, I always assumed, up until a couple of years ago, I assumed that's what the jurors were anyway, and they're not. I think it should be a requirement in the music industry. I also really like how Ukraine this year had a public vote for their jurors. I think it was online <laughs> and you could vote. A Rolly publicly said, voted, musically professional jury, I think is the way to go. Rolly said, we're only hosting because of the jury, but no one's moaned about that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, not even that. We, we, we're hosting because of a, yeah, because a, a fake people jury. Cheated. <laughs> a fake jury as yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. So stupid. Um, any and all of these, uh, and I'd like to remind you as well that there was uh, a video compilation that was doing the rounds of Laureen and uh, Karia, and they were uh, being interviewed about the uh, the kind of the finale situation. And Laureen said that upon winning, her first initial reaction was, um, "I need to speak to Karia. I need to go and be with Karia. That needs to be the thing." But of course, she was whisked off to do the, the winning thing again. And when Karia was asked about it. He said that upon hearing that people were uh, saying allegations of cheating X, Y, and Z, he was absolutely gutted. You could see that. He was heartbroken. But he was also infuriated by people throwing vitriol at Lorian for something which... Mm. For, for what? For coming with a good song. If those two are the best, again, only one of them can win. We don't live in a world where every single person gets a prize. People are just get so butthurt about stuff. It just It is the way it is. Dorina, you've sent us a large super chat. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm so happy most of my friends are online from the UK. So excited now I can watch Eurovision, not by myself. I've been watching since 95. Y'all are the best. These outfits, I'm going to say it again, your talent is out of this world. Thank, Thank you, you so, so, much. so much. A lot of people um, talking about... If that feels like <laughs> 75-25 split. I don't agree. I think 50-50 is perfectly fine. I just think the people that are being selected for the jury needs to be shaken up. And someone else said that if you're in the music industry, that opens you up to more um, lobbying. Not if it's public knowledge who these people are. I think if it's publicly voted, 
everybody can see who's who. And when I say music industry, I'm talking more music professionals. It doesn't have to be somebody like a record label executive. It could just be a professional singer, a musician, like somebody who knows about music and performing. What they're doing. Yeah. Um, Amber Sands, hi girls, who would be your dream Eurovision act to send? For the UK right now, I think we need to stop being silly and actually try. Try for Rina. I think Rina would be good. I think Rina would be good. At one point in time, I probably would have said Jessie J for the vocal. Um, I think Jessie J is also a very, very good option. Um, It would depend on the song though, because... Her back catalogue is patchy. Your talent is out of this world. Um, oh, thank you so much, oh. BB Archive. I think that, yes, I think I that with the juries, uh, maybe a slightly really lower percentage. Um, 50-50, maybe like a 60-40 deal, something like that possibly, but certainly increase the number of jurors. I don't know yeah. why they didn't do that after last year's riggery anyway. That seems a bit um, a bit strange. There's a lot of your favourites that would not have got to where they were without jury votes. So just careful what you wish for because that is not the answer. That and you know what? Answer. If if Karia had won, we listened to that song day in, day out, over the moon. I'm happy. I would have preferred Laureen to win, but I'm not going to go about suggesting that there's some kind of riggery or some kind of BS involved. No. The fact that people are saying, well, she only won because she's won before. Winners have tried before and it's not worked for yeah. them. Like, let's talk about Alexander Ryback. Did terribly. A lot of people as well saying that this song is generic. It sounds like euphoria. It's, again, it's just, there is nothing wrong with being self-referential. And in fact, I think that's probably why it did so well because it made people think of euphoria. There's a nostalgia to simpler times and that's partly why it did well. And pop music is self-referential. You don't have to like the song, but some some of the criticism I've seen lobbied at it. It's oh, just I just so it, again, it's all young, stupid people in the fandom. I'm choosing to believe that it's really like petty little teenage bitches. Um, Alexander, the riggery last year was that there were five countries, I believe it was five, whose jurors had clearly switched votes for each other, and the EBU found out Caught before them. the grand finals, so swapped out their results for an aggregate score and only made a public statement, I think, after the fact. Yeah. Um, anyway, the point is, I think Karia is on a world stage now and we're over the moon for him because he seems like the nicest guy. I am a bit concerned, though, because I do think this song, for him... It's probably a fluke for me. I don't think I'm going to like his music. I've listened to a lot of his music and it's not There is really a bit of that. I really liked this song because of the 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 hook towards the end the, where it starts singing. And that is not what his normal stuff is like. It, there's a little <laughs> bit of that moment. Now, yes, it's going to be in Sweden. I think we're talking about that Stockholm might be in the lead. Of, or, you know, it's very early days, obviously. Jade Thurwell is a good idea for Eurovision, um, sure. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Maybe I'm not a little opposed. Too famous. Maybe a bit too much of a name. I'm not opposed to sending a complete unknown. We've often done that, haven't oh. we? And I also think that tap music know what they're doing. Yes, I do not think May was a bad idea at all. I think she was bang on the money. And it, it just didn't pan out in the end yeah, like we wanted it to. There are so many other moving parts to being a Eurovision participant. And I think for some reason, as we got closer and closer to the finishing line, it didn't come together it didn't. Correctly. It kind of fell apart. Whereas it could have done, though. We've always said she had the potential, and I stand by that. Because until you get to the semis, or for us, until you get to, yeah, the first rehearsal at the semis, everything is theoretical. Yes. Everything is. And even yes. if a song is great, there are so many sick songs in there that, that just did not cut it. Uh, because it came down to a presentation where it fell apart and it didn't make people sit up and say, what's happening here? Yeah. You need to, you have a product, you need to be able to sell it. People keep saying someone who can sing, someone who can sing. I don't even think that's as important as you think it is because rap music exists. Like there are, there are genres of music that don't have lots of singing. Carrier just came second and he's not really singing, is he? Let's be honest. His so vocal, think, well, he was at the end, but his vocal wasn't very strong. If you're doing a ballad, then it sure, you need, the you need to be able to perform the song you are performing. Let's say that. If you if the song requires singing, then you have to be able to sing. But I don't think you have to have a song that contains singing. Does that make sense? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, you know, we've seen... This, the first thing we did when we found out that May Muller was represented us was go and watch live performances of her and see how she delivers a live vocal. And she's a very, very good live singer. Perhaps it was the fact that she was representing an entire country on a stage of 
yeah. how, however hundred million people watching the year after we sent someone who was our triumphant comeback after two decades, the pressure on her would have been immense. And if yeah. she wasn't nervous, people would have been like, well, you're a fucking robot. Also, she has done, she supported Little Mix on tour, but if she's doing a set of, say, five songs, the first one can be shaky, and then you get a chance to get back into it. When you've got one chance to do one, one song, you can't shake also, it up and then do another another one. Like There wasn't a huge amount of kind of blocking and choreography, but if she's not used to that, because from all the performances we've seen, she stands in front yeah. of the microphone, which yeah. is nothing wrong with that. That's the kind of performer you are. Absolutely fucking go for it. But in terms of the blocking and the, the choreography, if she's not used to that, it might be a case of overthinking certain things. And in which case you might be like, well, then why send her in the first place? Again, because it's all theoretical until you get there. The real winner of Eurovision 2023 was Alicia Dixon's rap. I loved that. Oh, <laughs> I not okay. Ari. Uh, we, what need, was it? we need to wrap this up though. Not Speaking of Angela rapping. Bassett did the thing. In, in closing though, the production was sick. The hosting, everything about it I was really I think the UK slick. and Liverpool should be very, very proud of what they put together in shorter time than people normally get as well. Let's not forget that. Yeah. Everything went smoothly. The product, uh, the the staging, the arena, everything was great. Cornelia Jacobs' cover of I Turn To You was exquisite. We screamed yeah. when we saw that. Yeah. And um, Petra, Petra Amedi, I, I, I know, listen, I know she's hosted it already. I know people are like, stop with the overkill, it'd be the same shit. I don't care about that. I also see people I just want having Petra. discussions that she's swapped networks, apparently. Who cares? I, I, obviously, it's a different country, but Alicia Dixon has a contract with ITV and they saw someone who managed to get her on a BBC production. So I'm sure there are ways, there might be wiggle room to negotiate. In closing... Laureen won and we we're very very happy about yes. it but we also love Karia and would have been just as happy if absolutely I would have been just it. as happy because Finland is one of these countries that always bring quality or have done for a while now and are deserving of another win I think a lot of people are going to be watching UMK next year absolutely and the other thing just quickly is that obviously there was a lot of discussion about you know well which country is going to come last in the semis is it going to be Romania or San Marino and nobody guessed that they would come joint last <laughs> Don't be mean. Stop this. We're not about that at all. But people were like, well, which one's going to do the fair the worst? I never even considered that they would both get zero. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. That's too bad. I will say on, on, the, on those, though, even though the songs did not care for them, both of the vocals for that were very, very strong. Yeah, actually, yes, Roma you're right. Teodor's vocal was always excellent. It's a shame there's just no always. taste. It's just a, it's a very no, bizarre... No taste to be seen it, there wasn't anywhere on that And Pete Jacks, again, he, very, very good. Very, very strong performance from them. Yeah. It just was a song that people were not... They were songs that people yeah. weren't going to tap into. Yeah. But we're going to leave it there. We're going to do some birthdays. We'll do some birthdays. We've got some Patron birthdays. Um, first of all, I would just like to say that for May 2nd, Feats in Wellington, New Zealand... Happy birthday for Happy May birthday, second. Um, we missed you off and that was entirely my fault. I always say it's Nova's fault, but that was literally <laughs> my fault. Happy birthday to you. And for May 3rd, for Rob in Vermont. Happy birthday, Rob. You just joined and we missed it off for a different reason. But happy birthday. Thank you for being members of the Patron. Um, are we doing all this whole block? Yes. Okay, so May 8th was Mimike Q's birthday. Happy birthday, Mimike Q. Mimike Q. I think it's like that Pokemon, isn't it? It's Mimikyu, but he's put his he's name put Mike, Mike in there. He's put Mike in there. Happy birthday. Uh, for May 10th, it was Chris's birthday. Happy birthday, Chris. Happy birthday, Chris. Uh, May 11th, we had Bernard and Donald. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to the two of you. Now, listen, for May 13th, this is a weird one, um, because Bruno has sorted this out for you, Luke. Bruno is your gorgeous boyfriend. This is strange. <laughs> and he's he's signed you up to receive a birthday shout-out from us. So happy birthday, Luke! Happy birthday, Luke! From Bruno. And we've got exactly the same situation for May 13th with um, Lauren. Lauren, your girlfriend, Becky, has huh? signed you up. So happy birthday, Lauren! Happy birthday, Luke and Lauren. Thank you so much. Um, for the 15th, we had Dilbos and Rachel. Happy birthday. For happy birthday on the 17th it was alex's birthday and then on the 18th which is today the it's today happy birthday it's lovely, lovely day oh uh, listen um I, i've said this a whole bunch of times but our vlog is on patreon right now the two hour extended cut if you want to mm. go over there if not it's coming out on sunday that's probably everything from us i yes. think you can watch this back again if you'd like but thank you yes, for joining us on demand 
Thank you for all the super chats. This has been... I've really enjoyed this. I think we had a solid chat today, guys. Really good chat. Stop looking at my teeth. Really good. Shall I just take this off now? I could do. There's my face, look. <laughs> oh, it's like... <laughs> you with that a, lovely makeup. A big like red no mark. Reason. You can see it in per... You could see it in person. Look how good my Just skin there. looks. I've been wearing this fucking thing. Because this is only like five... 40 it's like two things it's not, two things yeah it's like two pixels okay thanks right then, then. Right, all our love thanks for coming guys Ta-ra. bye, bye.